Kai Green knows bodybuilding is a science. Get the science right with muscle meds. I've got some interesting questions for you. A lot of people are asking questions about Kai Green now that you've arrived, clearly being the Arnold Classic champion. You've joined company such as Flex Wheeler, Nasser El Sambadi, Vince Taylor. Uh, thank you. Um, Vince Taylor, myself. <coughs> um, of course, Jay Cutler. You're in very good company at the Arnold Classic, and now everybody wants to pick your life apart. One of the questions I was asked is, how did you get the scar coming from your eye down to the center of your cheek? <laughs> Bill can do the close-up. Go ahead. Well, you know, <clears throat> you know, when we see a person do something and achieve something, a lot of times people will ask you, hey, you know, what did it feel like? You know, what does that mean? And though you can struggle to find the words and try to uh, impress upon the person those thoughts, those feelings, it's difficult to because you can't even begin to give an account for every place that you have been in the course of your journey. And just as you are there celebrating an incredible high point, um, we have to know that at some point prior to that, there had to be incredible lows as well. Um, with that said, my moment of triumph and the triumph for my team as well is not going to be best spent talking about you know those darker low points way back when you know um, it's behind me trust you know it has had its its lasting impact um, and um, on me but you know going forward you know it's that moment when you're standing on stage in your moment of triumph that you that makes all of the suffering and all of even the past struggles make sense you know there was a time when now that you do bring up the scar um, there was a time when I when I first wrestled with dealing with that and you know, you're thinking that, wow, you know, my life is forever going to be impacted upon because of this. You know, people are going to be able to make snap judgments about my character, who I am, um, where I'm going and where I can't go as a result of having this marker. Um, so there was a time when they kind of kind of wrestled, wrestled with this idea of shame and, and even more punishment, you know ever you know being mindful that the the marker is there um, but in order to step forward and reach for where I'm reaching now um, I don't think about those things and I don't reflect on those things anymore so to talk about the story that may have happened more than a decade ago of what happened to my face you know um, I will say that um, you know, I'm in the path of increase presently, and I'm looking forward, you know, I'm looking forward. Do you think stories like that are, are better reserved for a book, the tell-all book by Kai Green, those struggles and triumphs that you've had in your life? Because a lot of people, when you have a champion, much like a boxer or, you know, a hard luck stories, that those are what people want to know because a lot of people go through the same things that you go through or have gone through, but they they didn't realize they are not the only ones that have to have gone through it because they're they're hearing of your struggles and now they're watching the fruits of your labor and they might feel that they can do it too. Well, you know, I think um, at a time when, you know, I've gotten a chance to process that a little bit more and, you know, have decided on my own to reveal that in the way that I see best fit at another time, I'd definitely like to share with you and everyone else what that is. Well, see, now you've made it Now you've made it a story. We're all going to speculate. What about the ponytail? A lot of people keep talking about the ponytail. Are you conscious of self-image? Is it a marketable tool for you? I mean, what does it represent to you uh, with your ponytail and your, your, your braid? Well, I think what it does is, number one, you just... You just identify yourself as not being afraid to be you, you know. Um, conformity sometimes can kill a, a person's spirit, you know. Um, 
And if you don't have to, you know, if you can be yourself, um, I'm very proud to be able to be in an organization that would allow me to, you know, to wear my hair the way that I do and not tell me, hey, Kai, you need to cut that if you want to be, you know, taken seriously. Um, you know, I'm proud to be able to represent a company or a magazine, you know, that can see the value in that individual uh, statement and uniqueness and embrace it rather than, you know, force me or threaten me to conform. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger said that you had the best posing routine that he had ever saw. I was standing within arm's reach when he said that to you. How did that moment resonate in your mind when a lot of people out there on the boards and such said that they'd never seen a 260 pound man do a fitness routine before? Well, you know, I think that, you know, it's real interesting. A person can come along and they can, you know, talk about doing something and do it. And, you know, if it is that everybody else isn't doing it, they can kind of be looked at as funny and strange. I mean, the Mohawk right now, I've seen it become a very fashionable thing in, you know, cities like New York and so on. You know, I've seen grandmothers with it. I've seen young people with it. I've seen old people with it, you know. But 30 years ago, you know, Mr. T was a freak, you know, for walking around with that. And he was all the more unique as a result of wearing it. Um, you know, I think that it, you know, it's, it's real important to be an individual. And if you can you know, do it in a way that does not, you know, affect anyone else negatively and at the same time, you know, earn you the distinction, you know, of uh, your own appeal, then, you know, why not do it? I want to also say something else, too. You know, I think that um, I heard a, a hip-hop song some years back um, that really helped me make sense of something and that's this idea that um, it was a hip-hop artist I believe that had the misfortune of having a finger or so cut off and in one of the lyrics of his albums you know rather than wear it and use it to identify himself as a, a badge of shame he ended up turning it around and allowing it to become the identification of authenticity you know and soon as he put himself in alignment with success you found that more people ended up you know identifying that as a trademark of a kind of successful um, image so that said the, I think the lyric was and if you got ten sticky fingers oh man I just lost it that sucks <laughs> and if you got ten sticky fingers then it's an imitation because it's then a figure of your imagination uh oh, oh, oh wait it gets worse and he went you know, on a, but anyway, the point I'm just trying to make is, is that, you know, um, yeah, there was a time when people would make fun of the scar. You know, there was a time when people would sooner become distracted by that and not be able to, you know, witness or pay attention to the quality of this developing man. Um, um, or in, in that development, in that developing, what you're talking about, Arnold Schwarzenegger bestowed upon you the $10,000 best poser award in the face of criticism from some very masculine men who thought that you did a fitness routine. <laughs> I mean, do you have anything to say to them or are you setting a new trend in this bodybuilding business? Well, you know, I would only question, you know, just how far does their point of reference go back in the evolution of, you know, um, the, what is it called? Uh, um, of the, the the evolution of what we call opposing routine presently, I mean, um, if you look back in the twenties and you know the the strongman competitions that would you know develop on the sides of boardwalks where you had contortionists and gymnasts you know alike back before we learned how to learned all the things that we know of in the sophisticated science of muscular hypertrophy and how to you know create that and make muscles bigger and more swollen and rounded there was a time when the average training philosophies you know would have developed bodies that looked more like you know Steve Reeves and and gymnasts you know and as a result you had you know these men that though they were muscular or a lot more inclined when trying to demonstrate or display their muscle 
you know, use kinds of routines that were very similar to a contortionist or a gymnast or, you know, something that's far different than, you know, what we would see Branch Warren do on stage today. And I don't say anything to say anything negatively about the, that that approach to posing, but to say that, you know, if you say that that is the only style of posing that should be, then I, you know, I just question, you know, your awareness of just the history of its evolution. Right, and it's very well said because it is an art form, and art is left to the eye of the beholder, being that you are an artist. Destroying everything in his path, nothing can stop him, and nobody dare stand him. Alters his body and mind, taking his workouts to a new level of intensity, power, and extreme pump. Dark Rage is anabolic muscle pumps ever. Nothing is going to stand in Vic's way of becoming the next Mr. Olympia. With Dark Rage in his arsenal.